Hey guys, welcome back. Gif here again today. One of my favorite things to do is play and benchmark video games. And you may ask, well, why haven't you been doing more of it then, Gif? Well, I was waiting to get my 5600X in, install it, grab 16 more gigs of RAM, so that I could have a fully kitted out PC gaming machine again. And what you're gonna see is the results of that today on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And what we're gonna start off with is ultra settings with ray tracing turned on and one of the things i've really been debating hard is is ray tracing worth it in a game like call of duty battlefield valorant any kind of shooter that frames really matter and you're trying to be at least semi-competitive and on top of that you still have some of this mess right there with broken textures and things like that which has actually gotten better between driver updates and updates to the game now why does that matter in the grand scheme of things with ray tracing well Right now, I'm running the card at maximum, the game at maximum. What you're seeing is a couple interesting things. First of all, with the 5600X, it hovers around high 80s or 90% usage on the 3090. And right now, we're pulling right around 100 to 105 frames per second playing Call of Duty maxed out. So is that worth it? Well, I don't really think it is in a game like this. I think you're much better off to get a few more frames. Does it look glorious? Yeah, it really does. Do you notice it in any kind of competitive shooter when you're trying to play and actually shoot people before they shoot you back? No, I don't think it does. In my opinion, this is the kind of thing that really belongs in a game like Cyberpunk or some of your MMOs and RPGs. I just don't think it's worth it in a game like Call of Duty, especially there as you see the textures come unglued again. And frankly, that's only happening when I'm running the card at maximum settings. The settings are still on ultra now, but I've gone ahead and turned off ray tracing for this next stint. I wanted to see on a fairly high end gaming PC, what kind of impact did ray tracing have in the actual FPS during the game and not just on some kind of loop or static test. And you know, honestly, the difference was pretty damn substantial if I do say so myself. In real world numbers, you're probably looking at about 50 frames per second in my current setup. That's just keeping everything else on ultra, playing at 1440 and turning ray tracing off. So the difference as far as when the bullets get there can be pretty substantial in any kind of semi-competitive or competitive shooter. Now, however, I'm not trying to minimize ray tracing for how it might help a game look in something that's gonna be that MMO, RPG, big world kind of event. But that's not what I'm doing right here. That's not the kind of game I'm playing. The other thing, and I'm going to kick this down the road a little bit more and think about it, is I play on a 1440p, 144 hertz monitor. Can I lower the settings a little more and not notice any kind of visual deficit and get closer to 200 frames? If I was interested in buying some kind of like Alienware monitor that's maybe 240 frames at 1440, really expensive. One of those things my wife's like, Hey, is that channel paying for itself yet? And I'm like, no. And she's like, no new monitors for you. I know, comical side note there. However, it's one of the things I do think about, you know, because I do feel like when I was playing in 1080 at 240 Hertz, and not that you're always keeping 240 Hertz on any kind of decent settings, but when you're running north of 200, there is a difference you can see and feel versus having a monitor that's actually showing you 144. So that's one of those things I'm going to look at a little bit more, try to figure out for myself, is it worth it? But right now for a game like regular COD, for Warzone, for Valorant, for CSGO, for Battlefield, I don't feel like any of these games would be worth the frames penalty that you'd pay for ray tracing. I'm just frankly not sure in the video game world right now, is it worth what NVIDIA wants us to think it's worth? I really don't feel like it is. I've looked at some gameplay, a slowed down campaign and stuff like that, taking stills with it's on. It does look really, really awesome. However, there's always going to be a price to pay for it. And I just don't feel like it's going to be worth it in a lot of games right now. Maybe when we get to version three, version four, something like that down the road, maybe when they can DLSS, even more DLSS, it'll be something that helps us out even more. Right now, I'm going to keep it off for the time being. And we'll revisit it a year or two down the road when we have different cards to take a look at. Having said all that, Warzone's probably the next one for a benchmark. 
and then after that i'll probably circle back around to black ops or modern warfare with some more moderate settings and see what my frames are looking like then if you have a game you're dying to see on a high-end benchmark run let me know what it is and if i can accommodate it i'll be happy to do so if i can answer any questions leave them down in the comments i'm usually very active down there and if you enjoy hearing about pc gaming hardware tech and streaming please go ahead and consider subscribing that way you can find your way back for the next one video and until next time happy gaming and gif out